The following video may contain sensitive topics. The views and opinions of the presenter to these are plainly his own. Furthermore, any and all views and opinions of the presenter do not in any way reflect the views, opinions, statements, and advocacies of his personal contacts, his family, his affiliations, and his profession. While the presenter makes a commitment that all content is original, he is obliged to cite references or acknowledge resources mentioned or used in the production of this video. This disclaimer is also written in the description below. If you're new to this channel and you like the content you're seeing, please click the red, the big red subscribe button at the bottom right corner of the screen and make it gray. Also, I am one of a few... Right. Now before we begin, I would like to ask you a favor. If you're new to this channel and you like the content you're seeing, please click the big red uh, subscribe button at the bottom right corner of the screen and make it gray. And then ring the notification, notification bell by selecting all. Also, I am one of a few Filipino YouTubers out there who discuss matters other than what's trending on Filipino social media by commentating on things that mean a lot to all of us that we should consider thinking about them. Anyway, my name is Ian Rinyon, an independent media practitioner and aspiring writer and content creator. And with that out of the way, let's begin. Como na ako ng kape. Coffee with sugar. Cafe con azúcar. Hi there, Ian here, and welcome to another Top Topics, where we deal with the latest buzzing stories in social media, especially on local matters, the Catholic Church, social media, and a little bit of space stuff. So, for this Top Topics, we have five Top Topics, and then we have five Honorable Mentions. Mamaya yung Honorable Mentions on that. And anything that I might uh, reference for this video, um, I would link them to on the description below kung hindi sila masyadong trending kasi meron din ibang mga trending din dito na mga uh, ibang mga social media or mga, ibang mga balita na nagbabuzz din sa mainstream so I'm not going to uh, link them on the description below I guess you can google it yourselves pero most of it nilagay ko sa baba but anyway Let's get started with number five. We all know that the 2nd of November and the 24th and 31st of December are all are always considered special working holidays. November 2 is uh, All Souls Day and then uh, 24 and 31 of December uh, are the days before Christmas and New Year respectively. So, <clears throat> normally, talagang Lalo na pag 24 and 31, talagang nagsya-shutdown na talaga ang lahat. And uh, naka-Christmas break na sila and all that. But then again, I am not sure why um, people upstairs are uh, going to are going to consider these as special working holidays. But since, uh, the con as I said, the context here, they were not working holidays prior to the announcement. But as someone coming from a BPO industry background where client holidays are the ones were the ones observed instead of Philippine holidays, it comes as no surprise for me. Ewan ko na lang kung iba mga, yung ibang mga tao dyan eh, wala na rin pakialam. But then again, medyo, ano, medyo nakaka, nakaka, yun, medyo nakakapagtaka kasi hindi na double pay or at least may extra pay dahil papasok ka ng holiday so uh, yun kasi ang mindset din minsan ng mga, nas, mga kapatid natin sa mga kapabayan natin sa 
BPO industry and uh, I know some some of them so uh, talagang medyo affected din sila kahit papano but then again it's no surprise so sayang lang na mababawasan sila ng bayad but then again uh, what can we expect uh, anyway this coffee is great number four Uh, the Philippine National Quincentennial Committee, or the NQC 500, um, has organized an art competition about the first contact between Filipinos and Spain and Catholicism uh, since on the 16th of March this year would mark the 500th anniversary of the dawn of Christianity in the Philippines as well as the first contact between the Filipinos and Spaniards. So. For the theme, Legacy, um, where the topic supposedly revolved around the bestowing of the Santa Nino de Cebu to the recently converted monarchs of Cebu, Carlos Humabon and... I don't know the name of native name of ni Juan. Eh. Mm, let me check that out. Ito ko eh. I mean, I have well-researched this... Ano, I have well-researched this... Uh, pero then again it's just screwed up anyway uh, habang nagaano ako dito uh, ad hoc ako na uh, last minute research uh, while recording eh na-check na-check niyo ba yung buwan sa so, ngayon talagang it's a full moon and nakatuwa lang na talagang makita mo talaga yan Ayun, si Humamay. So, si uh, Carlos Humabon and uh, Juana Humamay, uh, they, are, they are the monarchs of, the recently converted monarchs of Subu by that time. And uh, the grand prize was won by a certain uh, artist named Bernardo Maak. Nothing wrong with the artworks themselves. All three major winners did an excellent job in interpreting the scene. But the title of the winning work was, get ready for it. Presentation of the article. Of course, a lot of Catholics, specifically those in my own circle of contacts included, reacted in condemnation about the title itself. Not really the artwork, but the title. There was even a suggestion that Maak was not even a Catholic in the very first place, and thus his rationale for the title and description was absolutely askew if you ask an obviously practicing Catholic. I, for one, viewed the title of the work as done in bad taste, if not in bad faith. While Ma clarified and apologized for the seemingly misguided thinking with his work, A, the damage has been done, and B, No Filipino Catholic would buy his explanation unless he changed the title of his work, which I think is highly unlikely. Number three. So, nasabi ko na to sa last um, sa top topics last week. Pero uh, since the March 2020 Perseverance rover has just landed, uh, all of the data that uh, the team behind it. They're receiving it from Perseverance. Uh, medyo delay talaga. So, patuloy lang yung, ano, yung pagbigay ng uh, data ng ni Percy dito. Percy pala yung, ano, yung nickname ni ano, Perseverance dito. And uh, since uh, it had successfully landed uh, without a hitch, the data Percy is sending back to Earth is astonishing. Specifically, the the HD, not not necessarily HD, but it's of better quality than other landers. I think it was the first time na narecord yata yung landing sequence ng uh, isang Mars rover or isang Mars lander. So talagang uh, nakakabilib talaga yun. And uh, this, the HD sights and sounds of its landing and par- panorama of the red planet planet was absolutely astonishing. Uh, you can check out the landing sequence, the video of the landing sequence on the description below. I think this was the video made by uh, NASA's uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Uh, 
akala mo talaga ano eh nasa earth yung ano eh yung uh, yung ano na yun yung um, rover na yun but it was on Mars it was recorded on Mars it was sent back to earth the details are absolutely astonishing you should check that out wow ang bilis ko pala dito sa ano na to sa uh, top topics ko grabe Number two. So we all know that Josh Pintero, or Joshua Pintero, or Josh Pint. I'm not sure if that's the real name, pero Joshua Pintero yung ane eh, yung personal Facebook niya, and then his screen name is Josh Pint. Uh, he's known to many uh, who follow Team Payaman as the official editor of Lincoln Velasquez, aka Kong TV. Um, we all know that he announced his intention to resign as et- editor effective today on this um, on this recording, the 28th of February, 2021. Reason for, reasons for this, res- uh, for his resignation rather, have been speculated, but I think Josh clearly stated that he would like to create more content for himself, specifically as part of Team Payaman. And probably, I'm not sure, if in the in the style of another Josh, which is Josh Drake. Either way, Kong himself stated in one of his daily vlogs that uh, since Josh is resigning, he would be part of T- TP's content team and that he would need another ep- editor. Now, speculations point out that Bei Sunga, another member of Team Payaman, would fill in the role of uh, editor. Uh, but if you ask me, since nag ano ako nagreal to ako kay Spark Farnasio, I think this is his time to apply if he really dares to earn a spot in the Payaman Shon. Ewan ko na lang kung tatanggapin siya. Ewan ko na lang kung uh, tatanggap ng external hiring sa Team Payaman or si Kong for ano for editor for his editor. And I'm not sure kung kakailangan din ni Josh Pitt ng ano, sarili niyang editor at itapon si Spark kay Josh Pitt. So, abangan na lang natin ang susunod na kabanata. But then again, the announcement video would be on the description below. And at ito, bonus pa. Uh, uh, during this recording, eh, ang latest video ni Kong ay yung sinurpresa niya, yung, uh, yung helper nila sa Payamansyon. Uh, he... They call him Kuya Inday. And, uh... Sinabi niya na yung pamilya na ay nasa Dumaguete. So, I am not sure kung mes- medyo Mr. Beast-ish ang ano niya. Ang naging uh, motive niya dun. But then again, uh, natuwa, natuwa ang lahat ng napanood yung video na pina, pinaluwas nila ng Maynila yung asawa at anak ni Kuya Inday and uh, sinorpresa talaga nila kumbaga sinorpresa na nga, sinorpresa na nga siya na pinabihisan and then that happens sa Payaman Shon I'm not gonna spoil it you can check out the video on the description below as well so um, tawag ito tulungan din natin si Kuya Inday sabi dun sa video uh, all of the proceeds for that video would go to Kuya Inday so kung ako, na, kung ako sa inyo, panoorin nyo yun and uh, tulungan natin or uh, tulungan natin mag ano, tulungan natin magka-pera si Kong na para maibigay niya kay Kuya Inday for that video, alright? So, yun na. <laughs> Gago! Set ng kape? Kape. <clears throat> alright, so let's go for the honorable mentions. First off, from one Team Payaman member to another, Pao Sepagan, aka Roger Racker, would become Roger Father. Okay. That's weird. <laughs> That's weird. So, medyo TLDR din para sa akin, kasi alam ko na may girlfriend si, ano, si Pao. Pero I've never thought that, uh, 
he made uh, he made his girlfriend pregnant. So he would sire a baby boy following the earlier announcement that his partner Mick Cruz or Michaela Cruz is pregnant. So uh I'll link ko sa baba yung uh, link yung, vid- yung YouTube link sa gender reveal nina uh, nina Pao at, at Nick para sila nag-upload ng videos ng sarili lang videos and uh basically they're just telling that it's a boy. So since it's a boy, I would probably think Pao and Nick would name their son Emmanuel in honor of their late friend Emma Nimedes. May he rest in peace. So basically uh di pa siya nila alam daw eh kung anong papangalan na pero speculation ko lang naman to ah I am absolutely speculating they would name their son Emmanuel um, in honor of Emma Nimedes so if that happens it's gonna be a welcome uh, gesture not only for Emma's um, next of kin and his uh, uh, bereaved girlfriend pati na rin sa buong team pa yaman so magkakaroon na rin ng kalaro si Mavi and uh, at least eh, hindi man napalad si Nakong at V na magkaroon ng sariling anak uh, since na miscarriage si V um, naman yan na buntis siya kay Kidlat uh, at the very least there's a new birth in the there's a new birth in VP and uh, yun basta talaga babies talaga ano eh pare-pares tayong makakaano eh makaka-relate sa sa ganyang mga kwento so that's basically it all right so another one of the another one of the honorable mentions is ako si Doggy and uh, Chicks or Casey uh hindi ko na alam yung apelyido niya i don't really want to talk about this too much because uh, they broke up and the situation is Brr- I am not sure what happened, but it's probably equally cringy as the Merck Cafe split. So, uh, nagdadalong isip pa ako, ilalagay ko yung mga video nila sa description sa baba. But out of transparency, I would do that. But please, mga kabayan, watch those videos at your own risk. So, another one of the honorable mentions is IKEA. IKEA is now in the Philippines and you heard me right. It's now in Manila. It's going to be the world's largest outlet. I only hope this would prompt the rise of DIYer content creators and reviews uh, by our own KonMari consultant, uh, KonMari decluttering consultant, uh, Renelin Tan Castillejos, whom I personally encountered back when I was a college kid in some advocacy group. So itong si Ate Ren, uh, Prior to her marriage and prior to her uh, expertise in decluttering, uh, she's with this advocacy group that I am in uh, back in college. I think she's 10 or 5 years older than me, that's for sure. And um, nakatuwa lang na, ano, na sumisikat na siya on that, ano, on that regard. In hindsight, nung... Ano, nung naalala ko na ano na binaha ang Pinoy's Realm House uh, at ano parang vinlog ni Kloko yung ano niya pag declutter niya at pag ayos niya doon sa ano niya kwarto niya or sa space niya I should have I should have commented on Kloko's video na uh, he might have uh, con- uh, solicited the help of uh, Ate Ren so anyway that's uh, that's the past and I hope uh Maybe in the future, eh, makonsider yun ng, ano, ng, bo- ng Pinoy's voice. So, tinan natin. Pagos na rin kape ko. Patay tayo dyan. Alright, so, another one of the honorable mentions, uh, Cardinal Luis Antonio Tagle, has been appointed for more Vatican roles. Specifically, His Eminence would, be re- would reportedly be assigned to the Vatican Bank on top of his role as the red the red pope or the prefect for the congregation of the evangelization of peoples or the Pro- propaganda fide co- congregation so uh, we all know cardinal tagle i mean no introduction needed to be honest so 
that's basically the the whole thing. So good luck to Sanya. And finally, in the honorable mentions, Gian Com- Conception or Gian Conception, aka Glocko, just shot his gold play button. For all I know, and I made some research here, uh, he is only one of he is o- he's one of only two YouTubers in the f-ing world who have deliberately defaced or destroyed their YouTube play button. An American YouTuber named uh, Rusty Cage uh, already made his YouTube play button his target practice back in October 2020. So I'm not sure if Loco may might or might not have watched the video, but I certainly think he had some inspiration somewhere, if not that video. So, medyo notorious din tong si Glocko eh, kasi uh, he has done this previously with his silver play button um, when he smashed it with a sledgehammer. And then prior to making the gold play button his target practice uh, in collaboration with Guns Pinoy, uh, Glocko also uploaded a 15 second video of him licking the damn thing. <laughs> Weirdo din talaga to si Glow, eh. Buti na lang, buti na lang minahal siya ni Deng Chan. <laughs> Pero seriously, and, um, congratulations kay Glow for reaching a million subscribers. And, uh, and, uh, I have to say that, uh, his video shooting his gold play button is in the upper half of the 100, uh, top trending videos on YouTube. So, uh, I hope that um, pag sakaling nag-10 million na siya and uh, he would have his diamond play button, I only hope or I only speculate na magtatra- itatrain niya yung balikat niya kasi I want him to shoot a 50 cal on his diamond play button. Yun lang. <laughs> I mean, if Glocko can do that, I hope Demolition Ra- Matt character of Demolition Ranch should also do that. But anyway, bala na different. It's different strokes for different folks. <laughs> so Glocko and Rusty Cage sila palang yung uh, kumana sa mga gold play button nila. Uh, and basically turned it into Swiss cheese. So let's see what happens. Uh, kung may may sumunod. Oh, by the way, uh, that 15 second video na dinidila ani Glocko yung ano yung virgin ano virgin form ng ano ng gold play button naging meme na siya. Okay, naging meme na siya. Uh, it's just a bit. <laughs> It's just a bit cheesy uh, or cheeky, to be honest. So maybe you have to, you can check that out. Uh, I've um, provided the link for both videos uh, on the description below, so you can check that out. So <laughs> nagatwa lang shooting your gold play button. Damn, that's nice. And finally. Number one, speaking of guns, I don't know if anyone had already coined this inci- this for the incident regarding an apparent misencounter between the National Police and the Philippine Drug and Drug Enforcement Agency or PDEA, but I call it the Battle of Commonwealth Avenue. Now here's some context. Short context now. PDEA apparently has some kind of by bust operation and the PNP wanted a piece of the action at some point. Then some trigger happy son of a gun took a shot and all hell f***ing broke loose. Now a little anecdote was even shared by netizens that some one woman at a certain donut shop was just buying some dessert treats as pasalubong or uh, uh, dessert treats uh, to her children when the shots were fired. Now this woman, out of fear, perhaps, told the police officer who, who entered the shop to allegedly take cover to secure the donuts she just bought. 
So it's too complicated actually to um, tackle about this that I am thinking if I should create a separate video about this or not. Anyway, um, do you think I should do you think I should uh, make another video or a separate video for this uh, for this incident? Let me know in the comments below. Now, is there anything else I might have missed? What do you think about the stories I shared in this video? Let me know in the comments below and I would absolutely read them and reply to them as much as I can. I would definitely appreciate it as well if you would also share this video to everyone who would watch something different from an independent Filipino content creator such as myself. Anyway, I've been rambling for the past half hour now. And uh, kaya ako na rin gubusin tong kape na to. So from me to all of you, cheers! And that, so that's gonna be a wrap for me now. And with all that said, this is Ian reminding you to at all times be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Until then, look alive, stay alive, and see you next time. Ian out.